Hello there, my name is Polish Links. This was supposed to be a calm evening, or should I say a calm night. I was supposed to actually catch up on the last episodes of Attack on Titan. Uh, I was supposed to maybe later watch Psychopaths, the first inspector or something like this. And then I see this on Steam. Sakura MMO Extra. Let's get to it, shall we? My name is uh, Viola in the game, <clears throat> and I live in the land of Asaf. Uh, it's a Yuri game, by the way, in case you don't know. Also, if you want Sakura 1 to 3, uh, links in the playlists. And any Sakura games, really. Or, you know, there is also a link to the Steam web page. Store page. Yeah. I'm a Dark Witch, renowned for my boundless magical power, and all those who know me fear it. I'm one of the most powerful witches there is. But that wasn't always the case. Now that I think about it, I should note the choices here, because in Sakura games I actually always do that. Don't mind me. A year pure, I was a perfectly ordinary woman called Kotone. I lived in Tokyo and I worked as a lawyer. My schedule was a busy one and I always found myself in the office doing overtime. It wasn't unusual for me to return home past sunset at 8 or 9 at night. Yikes. Would be nice if you actually started at like 12. That means it's 8 hours, right? I was so busy with work, I had little time for friends or recreational activities. Sounds about right. Okay, not now at least, uh, sorts of luckily enough, but not really. I do run after all. The only thing I did for fun was play MMOs. Was it fun for? Was it? <laughs> I've played a lot of MMOs in my time, but my favorite was a little game called Asaf Online. Perhaps you've heard of it. I played Asaf Online since launch. It was my go-to game whenever I wanted to unwin unwind and forget about the stress of my day-to-day -day life. I raised my character Viola to the max level cap. I invested countless hours in upgrading her equipment, customizing appearance, teaching her all the highest level dark magic spells in the game. I built my own homestead, the imposing nightmare citadel, and I filled its rooms with custom furniture crafted from the rarest monster drops. I even had my own mate, Neve, an NPC who I dressed in a freely black and white costume. My real life was average, but my second life as Viola was anything but that. I was regarded as one of SF's online's top players. Many people sought to challenge me in PvP, but I best them them all. Parties of up to 6, 7, 8 or more were no match for my high level spells and equipment. I, I was Asaf's online's unparalleled queen. That's right. If I enjoyed the attention and adoration, it did begin to get stale over time. I began to look for something more. I mean, you maxed out, so... That's to be expected, sorts of, right? If there is no challenge. <laughs> By the way, Viola, cutie. And then, in the burst of blinding light, I was summoned to the game I had loved for so long. I assumed the role of my lovingly crafted character, Viola. By the way, she, not in the game, was also extremely cute. And I began a brand new life in a fantastical world full of magic, witches, monsters, and magic. That's right. Magic. I assembled a party of the cute girls, namely Neve. My trusty mate, Fion, sneaky thief, Ellery, a beautiful but austere knight, 
I guess not all the details about them are going to be revealed, especially about Ellery. Our bonds grew stronger over time, and together we took on requests at the local guild and defeated wicked monsters. All the while I searched for an explanation for my sudden summons to Asaf. And eventually I discovered why I had been brought here. A threat was brewing deep beneath Asaf's earth. The fallen goddess Iona banished to the underworld after falling after a falling out with her husband was plotting her vengeance. She planned to raise all of Asaf to the ground and in so doing take an uncountable number of lives. The witch Gardenia heard of this and she used her magic to summon heroes to defeat Iona. I was one such a hero who was chosen, and Teleri was another. Armed with this knowledge, we embarked upon a quest to stop the deposed goddess for good. We travelled across Asaf, searching for the entrance of the underworld. When we finally found it, we then confronted Iona in her lair. A vicious battle ensued, Iona used her dark magic to control Neve, and I feared all would be lost. But Neve was able to overcome Yona's enchantment. Together the four of us bested her, and peace was finally restored. Asaf was saved. <laughs> After all that, Gardenia offered to return Ellery and I to Japan so we could resume our old lives. We had fulfilled our roles and were no longer needed. By that point, I had been in Asaf for several months. I did consider turning home, but the idea did not appeal to me. My life in Japan was blunt and boring. I lived comfortably enough in a nice apartment, but I was so busy with work I rarely had the time to enjoy myself. I was estranged from my family and I had few friends. I was so stressed and overworked I'd almost began to forget what fun was like. I wanted to enjoy myself. That's what work does it to you if you have too much of it, right? And corny for it might sound, I would have had to say goodbye to all the friends I'd made in Asaf. There were quite a few more, yes. Fion, Neve and Ellie are all precious to me, but they're not my only allies in Asaf. The cheery guild mistress, Maidy. The shy court young lady, Aileen. Oh, she was awesome. And the brusque pirate Bonnie, yes. I care for all of them, and I know that if I had decided to leave Asaf, I would not have them seen them again. My life would become barren and empty, devoid of fun, intrigue and adventure. That foe was too depressing for, for, for words. So I decided to stay in Asaf. Elric had intended to return home, but upon hearing of my decision to remain here, she decided to follow in my footsteps. Erina lives with me in my sprawling home now, as do Fion and Neve. The nightmare started is getting quite lively. But there's still about a dozen spare rooms, and there's plenty more space for even more guests. <sighs> what the hell? For some reason electricity literally shocked my finger. Ah. It's been six months since then, and I've not regretted my choice. The dark witch, witch Viola lives a far more interesting life than the mundane human Koton ever did. I never get tired of exploring Gasov. The verdant forests, the sprawling plains and the briny oceans are positively brimming with secrets. I want to unnerve them all with my partners at my side. Neve, Fion and Larry all confess their love to me and I love them in return. I enjoyed my life to its fullest. And now, I'm about to face a fierce horde of monsters. Achieve a lot back to Asaf. <sighs> Was I making a voice for her? I think I didn't. Let's not, whatever. Or maybe, whatever. I don't know. Alright, everybody, be careful. If we're too hasty, 
These armored drakes will strike us down without mercy. Their claws are sharp as their teeth, and they can breathe fire. We must keep our wits about us, lest we be torn limb from limb. That's easier said than done. Never my trusty maid should feel a glare. Unfortunately, some of us never had any wits to begin with. <laughs> True, I had that smart, but I'm pretty good with my daggers. I fought bigger monsters this and I lived to tell the tale. I think I'll be alright, but thanks for worrying. It's not like I was worried about you or anything. <laughs> That's another way of saying you care about me, but I'll take it. Thanks, Neve. I always knew you were a sweetheart deep down. I thought. Please do not, <coughs> do not misunderstand me or twist my words. I really don't care about you. Surely you then. <laughs> Alright, you two. Stop bickering. I glance between our enemies. My expression doubt. The drakes have yet to make a move, but I know them to be strong fools. We'll have to approach this carefully. <clears throat> Ellery, you flung these monsters on the right. Fion, you take the left. As never, please back me up with magic. Sorry. I mean, I'm sleepy. Again. There are more monsters than anticipated, but we must press on. Retreat is not an option. Right, you are! I've got my dog as waiting! Do you worst, you stupid monsters? No matter how big and scary you are, I will never hope you to beat me. Text? Where is the text? Okay. Hi, Kogur. The four of us have experience working together, and we have defeated foes fiercer than these. I will cut you down, and soon you shall be nothing more than bloody snares on the forest floor. Nice. A bloody smear, huh? That's pretty cool. You should know how to sound tavalry. Boy, am I glad you're on our side, huh? <laughs> oh, the, I, I apologize if I sounded too zealous. I was just trying to get into the spirit of things. It's fine, it's fine. I like how enthusiastic you get. It's cute. K -k -k I don't, I'm a knight. And we, in case you hadn't noticed, are in the middle of battle. The pair of you can finish your comedy skit later. Now! Never holds out her palm, her eyes narrowed. Fire! I will end the whole lot of you. If any of you drags their lay a club on me, lady, I will destroy you. Take the Neve. <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> too many voices, too many. I'm, I'm limited with that. Thank you, Neve. I knew I could rely on you, but please do not underestimate our foods. I do not want you getting hurt. Oh, Mama B Lady, you are so sweet to me. I am not worthy of your concern. But you need a threat. I am your mate, and as such, I would never dream of showing you a poor performance. That would reflect badly upon me. I mean you. I promise I will not embrace you. Mm, you never could. I have faith in you, never. I have faith in all of you. This fight may prove to be a tough one, but I know we can do it. I need a voice changer or something like this. That would be so much easier. Now, I shall join the melee. It's time to fight you to death. I will make you full monsters. Rue the day you were ever born. Take this! Approximately 10 seconds later. <sighs> Last time that was the pose when she was stomping Ellery, I think. Well, that was anticlimactic. I nudge the carcass of one of the fallen monsters with the tip of my dragon hide boot. Naturally, it doesn't stir. Its body is singled and blackened, and acrid smoke is emitting from its hide. For all my talk, I was able to find with a single spell. And then the rest of its companions do. Fion's blades and Lady's sword were quite unnecessary, as was Neves' magic. Uh, yeah, it only took a snap of my fingers to send this horde of drakes, drakes to their makers. In Asaph Online, drakes are pretty high level enemies. They're only a step below dragons, so the power tier scale. 
Even I had trouble with them from time to time in the past. But this so-called battle was complete and utter joke. Couldn't you, couldn't you have put, you know, put up more of a fight? I nudged Drake's corpse again. You, you should be ashamed of yourselves. That was pathetic. You don't even deserve to call yourself Drake's. What's the point in your sharp claws and if you are unable to use them? Is it all for show? It has got me. Before I know it, I've started to stamp on the Drake's carcass. I summoned it over and over again, with no small amount of force, but it remains motionless. <laughs> its head lolls and its eyes remain closed. It's utterly unresponsive. What's a Garrett got to do to get a halfway decent challenge around here? What's the point in having maxed out magic parameters if I don't need to use half the spells in my arsenal? Why did I bother training so hard? Was it all for nothing? Lady? Never looks up to me, her voice think with concern. Milady, are you alright? Well, oh, yeah. Um, I look down at the Drake corpse, then kick it away. Mm, I'm fine, what do you ask? It's just. Um, you had quite a scary look on your face. I did. Yeah, you look utterly enraged. I fear to mind, where's the blood vessel? Yeah! It was all sorts of freaky! You had a look on your face that could weave her corn, hey? <laughs> Are you sure you're okay? Hmm, yeah, I'm fine. I breathe in and close my eyes. I count to ten slowly, taking the time to cool my temper down and them anew. I take Hidnera's face, which is concerned, and Fion's, which is wide-eyed with alarm. I don't want to scare my own party members, that doesn't sound like a very productive use of my time. It's not their fault, I've yet to find any word for challenges since besting Kiona. They've done nothing wrong and sad is for him. Viola is. I have no desire to worry them. I force myself to smile. <laughs> it's all fine. Truthfully, I have felt somewhat dissatisfied as of late. But it's most unfortunate that I can indulge in winning such as Boredom, it's a luxury, few are afforded. I mean, with the current situation, I think quite a lot of people can know the feeling such as boredom. In the grand scheme of hymns, my problems are in school, they are hardly something worth fusing over. Now, shall we report back to the guild? Uh, we need to tell Holly that we have completed the day's quest. Sorry for yawning. That sounds like a wise idea. Let's be on our way. Woo! I can't wait to see Holly again. I love talking to her. I'm so happy I was able to reunite with her, hey? I'll tell her all about tonight's adventure. I bet she'll be super excited. Will she now? My throne. This fight was over so quickly I can't imagine anybody being amused by it. I'm happy that I was able to restore peace to Asaf, and I have no desire to turn to Japan, but... Uh, I hope I can fight some more Fifu soon, that would do well to break this stadium. If I cannot, then... I have no idea what I will do. I have another sigh. <sighs> I thought I'd be satisfied. If I could become the strongest witch in all of Asaf, but now I've achieved my goal and I'm at total loss. Fighting as it transpires is much fun when the outcome of each match is predetermined from the get-go. I think I need a change of pace. That was a quick jump. Oh, hello Viola. It's nice to see you again. Hmm, nice to see you too, but would you mind calling me Violet? Hmm. I glance about the guild surreptitiously. There aren't any other people here, save Holly and my party, but it never hurts, so to be careful. The good people of Linton are ready to know of my real identity. I fear, even you, I was Viola, the fear dark witch. They would run from me in horror. 
Yeah, being the famous Dark Witch Viola has a bunch of perks, but there are some significant drawbacks. Nobody knows that I'm the one who defeated the evil goddess Yona. In fact, most residents of Asaf are completely unaware that they were in any danger, save clairvoyants like Gardenia. I received no fame or recognition for my accomplishments. The people of Asaf know Viola as a wicked, malevolent witch, and I doubt I'll be able to do anything to change that. My reputation really does. Me. Because of this, I'm obligated to assume a false name when I go to Linton's guild. I called myself Violet. Yeah. They don't realize, by the way. And I dress in the garb of an adventurer. Very few people know my real identity. Linton's guild mistress, Maidy, is among them, as is Maidy's girlfriend, the sweet tempered Aileen. Then there is Holly. Holly works at the guild with Maidy. She's made this assistant, I guess you could call her. How did always work at this guild for? Not so long ago, she used to be a thief. She made living by begging for coins, and what she could not beg, she stole. Just like her younger sister, that is our teammate. <laughs> I met her long after my first foray to Asaf. She stole a loaf of bread from a market stall and Ellery, who used to be a city guard, captured her. I soon learned that Holly was, and still is, Fionn's sister. <laughs> still is. I mean, yeah. Uh, Fionn, fearing for her sister's welfare, implored me to rescue her before she could be imprisoned, and that's exactly what I did. I thought of the guards who apprehended Holly, Ellery included. Holly and Fionn had a touching reunion, and then Holly fled. I took Ellery, the defeated Sigurd, back to my still, hoping that she would make a valuable addition to my harem. I, I mean, party. And that was the last I saw of Holly for quite some time. I doubt that our paths would cross again, so you can imagine my surprise when I found out she was working at this guild one day. Maybe saw her begging on the streets of Linton and took pity on her. She offered Holly a job at this guild and a room along with it. Nice! Now Holly has a respectable job. And she lives in a small but pleasant quarters. She has Maidy for company, fresh bread all sweet, and she doesn't have to worry about going hungry. She can see her, uh, she can also see her de dear sister Fionn as often as she desires. Things work out very happily all around, if I do say so myself. Holly knows my true identity as the Dark Witch Viola, but she doesn't fear me as other people do. It's because of my intervention that she was able to escape captivity all those months ago, and she treats me with the utmost respect and gratitude. Her bowing and scraping is actually kind of cute. For I wish she'd learn to think before she talks. Like Fionn, she's the sort who blurts out whatever comes to her head. She's always forgetting to call me Violet, and she's utterly awful at subterfuge. It's a wonder she hasn't managed to blow my cover yet. <laughs> Sorry, Viola, I mean uh, Violet. Gee. If Holly weren't so cute, Asaf is full of cute girls, by the way. If you have noticed, I think I might start holding a grudge. So, how is business going? Is Maddie not here? I mean, maybe. She's out with Aileen. Again? Fion grins. I'll bet you those two are out on a lovely dove date. They're very close, yeah. I'm happy for them. Same here. Take me for a pretty couple, uh, pretty cute couple, huh? They're not much alike, but they make up for what the other lacks. It looks like they'd get along really well. I concur. I please. They have been blessed to find happiness. I don't know why. Got the blast from, but it works. Never press her body closer to mine and wins an arm through my own. And I am doubly pleased that, in light of their reunion, they will no longer regard Milady with lustful eyes. You think they saw me like that? It's hard to say in regards to Milady. She's as crafty as a fox. I don't always understand her. But Aileen was very fond of you. You even slept in her bed once. Is she bringing it up again, is she? It happened months ago. 
and this ability to hold the gravity is second to none. Now, what should I say? Rezer Ortiz. Rezer Ortiz. Rezer Ortiz. Rezer Ortiz. Let's go with option Rezer. Why not? He said I will be noting this down, right? Boom. I suppose that's true. But nothing actually happened. Alien was so exhausted she slept all night long. Good. I would hate for her to put her hands on him. I wouldn't. Alien was super cute. I must admit, I was worried Alien would take you away from me. She has many merits. After all, beauty, intelligence, kindness. She's a wonderful catch. But she has wasted herself on Maidy, and now she's out of the picture. You don't know that, actually. That's one less rival for me to worry about. <laughs> and she goes down my spine, like, cool. Never generally acts the mirror, but she has a short temper, and she's pretty possessive. She's lightened up over the last few months, and she's warm to the idea of sharing me with Sean Ellery. But I think sharing with me, I mean me, with anybody else would be taking things a step too far. Never claims she has my best interest at her heart, but she has desires of her own. And she's not that magnanimous. I wonder how she'd react if I flirted with other pretty girls in front of her. Well, I can always cross the bridge when I get to it. Maybe and Aileen are us undisputed couple. It's not exactly a secret, they are always going off alone together. I don't think I have much of a chance with either of them, for it's nice to imagine. Oh, me lady? Never grips me more tightly. You don't think of anything? Impure? Are you? Hmm, <laughs> now that's scary. Never too good at reading my mind. No, 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 of course, of course not. No, no. What makes you think that? Nothing. I just want to make sure. I know you have been feeling unfulfilled lately. But please do not succumb to despair. If you ever feel down, you may always rest your weary head upon my lap. Mm. Nice. As your mate, I shall do everything in my power to console you. Forget about other girls. They paid and commissioned me. I can offer you things they could never dream of. <laughs> you know, Neva, when you laugh like that, the air temperature drops by like 5 degrees. Celsius degrees. Oh. Never should feel a pointed glare. And what's that supposed to mean? Just a little scary at times, huh? Only a little? Holy raise an eyebrow. Sometimes think that maid might be more disturbing than Viola. I mean, Violet. I can be, if pushed to my limits. I'm perfectly calm right now, for... <laughs> She's clearly not. The sun is shining, it's a beautiful day, I have a complete orchestra. Is there anything more wonderful than that? So, you complete your quest, have you? Of course, we will come to this guild without having done our duties. Excellent! Did you collect the drake thief our client requested? Hmm, here we go. I hand hold you a pouch filled with sharp jack thief harvested from the felt drakes. She takes it, then hands me a small bag of gold coins in return. Here you go. Thank you kindly. The thanks is all mine. I drop Holly a small curtsy. Now I've gotten my reward, I should be done here. But I want to ask her a question before I depart. You wouldn't happen to have any hard requests you could give me in the future, would you? Hard request? Mm -hmm. Holly ponders one hand beneath her chin. I'm not sure. I have to ask Maidy whenever she gets back from wherever it is she is. Even you don't know where she's gone? She's been acting kind of secretive lately. She's been going away for hours on end, often with Aileen. She never says where she's going and she looks furtive when she comes back. I imagine they're going on dates. And they are leaving you to manage the guild on your own? Ellery, who's a stickler for hard work and efficiency in tasks. That doesn't sound very fair. Oh, I don't mind really. I'm not afraid of working hard. 
and Maidy is a fair boss. She always compensates me accordingly for my labor. It does bother me. But aren't you curious about where Maidy going? For all you know, she could be involved in something super shady. Shady? Like what? I don't know, smuggling perhaps. I doubt Maidy would do anything like that. She acts flippant and carefully, but she is a law abiding woman. <laughs> That's good, I guess. Just watch out for yourself, Casey. How would you get in roped into anything bad? I'll be fine. I can look after myself. You don't need to worry about that count. But as for more difficult quests, I don't think I have anything else to offer you. I'm sorry. So, so sorry. We've not been getting many requests for help, and we've not had many adventures stop either. You should be able to see how quiet it is for yourselves. Oh, yeah. I did think it was odd, yeah. Business has been slow here all week. But I suppose that is a good thing. I'm glad people aren't suffering. If there are fewer requests to take on, it will mean there are fewer people out there who need our aid. That is true, but... I, I wish I could be happy about the start of events, but I'm not that selfless. I was hoping Holly could give us some super hard requests that would rekindle my passion. But that was wishful thinking. It's totally dead around here. What do I have to do to get some excitement back in life? No. Night hits. Let's go. My business at Lilton concluded. I return to the Nightmare Citadel. My evening passes without the event and my nightfall I feel more restless than ever. I'm starting to feel trapped again, just as I did when I still lived in Tokyo. I feel like something's missing, but it's hard to pinpoint what that something is. I know there are people out there in this world who have problems far, far more severe than my own, but that does little to make me feel better about my own circumstances. You've got to get your act together, Viola. Stop moping. It's not attractive. True, but sometimes you can't help it, right? I castigate myself beneath my breath, but it doesn't really help. My thoughts continue to grow. They build and build until the four walls of my room feel as oppressive as prison cell. I wonder if there is any way to alleviate my current tension. Stay inside and read a book. Go for a walk in the forest. What do you guys think? She wants battles, so I think forest would be our goal, right? We will go for a walk in the forest. I mean, I don't know if I need to write the entire answer or choice, but I will. Let's go. Did I save? Yes. I can't see any longer. I'm afraid I will go mad. For it's middle of the night. I don don't my witch is gone and go for a walk in the nearby forest to clean my head. Nice. Achievement lock, moonlit stroll. If never were around, she would toot at my impetuous decision. The forest strongs with monsters and they got get stronger when the moon is full. But I have no reason to fear. I'm the great dark witch, and I can defeat any enemy with a click hog of fingers. I'm not in any peril. I'm simply too powerful. Besides, there haven't been many monsters roaming around us of late. That's partially why I feel so dissatisfied. The forest is quiet and calm. The only sounds I can hear are that of the leaves and twigs as they crunch beneath my soles. The moon hangs in the sky, large and round like a pearl. It observes me partially, lighting my way. Everything the moon touches looks white as milk. The leaves on the trees almost seem to glow. The leaves rustle and the undergrowth sways as small nocturnal animals dart to and fro. There was a sword. I think I can hear something, albeit faintly, above the whisper of the wind, a voice. 44, 45. 46. The voice sounds familiar. It's stern and serious, but distinctly feminine. 57, 58, 59. If my ears are not deceiving me, and I don't think they are, my senses hold my magic. 
are exemplary that they've always been long suit. 72, 73, 74. Ellery. The trees fin out about me and I step in the moonlight. Clearing. Or should I say moonlit? As per my expectations, my red headed knight is there. She's dressed in her armor, despite the lateness of the hour, and she's holding her sword aloft. She slashes and thrusts at invisible enemies while her silvery blade glimmers. Her red hair streams about her, and her scared flutters around her thighs. The expression of her face is set, and she looks coolly determined, as haughty and aloof as the moon above our heads. She must be practicing her swordplay. But as she falters the bone, she hears me. <laughs> Ellery starts blushing madly. She sheets her sword. Is surprised she doesn't drop it and turns to face me. I'm. Um, I didn't realize you were awake. It's. It's awfully late. I could say the same thing to you. It's now the best time to train. It's past midnight. Don't look at me like that. It's not like I do the same thing. The mood is bright tonight, but it cannot chase all the shadows away. I don't want you stumbling out here or spraining your ankle. I wouldn't. I'm very careful. I try to be at least, but... I'm sorry if I worried you, Viola. That wasn't my intention, it just... Ellery looks up at the moon, a pensive expression upon her face. I couldn't sleep. So decided to take up a weapon? She nods. Physical training helps her to relax me. I find I can sleep better when my body is utterly exhausted. There is something about that, I guess. No, there isn't. I don't know how much I would have to work out to feel the utter exhaustion. Maybe if it was in sun. Yeah. Actually, if I exhaust myself in the sun, then I'm completely drained and fall asleep immediately, but otherwise it's not possible. I'm actually more awake back afterwards. Uh, for, my, uh, for my muscles to age, something fierce the following morning. Perhaps it isn't the healthiest of coping mechanisms. No, indeed. You really will end up hurting yourself if you keep this up. You push yourself too hard. It's hard the first time we've had this conversation. I know, I know. I said I'd try to relax, but I can't help it. Lately I've been filled with so much nervous energy, this is the only way I can vent my frustrations. Frustrations? That is nice, bro. Has something happened to upset you? Oh, no, no not really. Well, it's just, well, mm, Asaf has been at peace for the last six months. We've not had to face any fools as strong as Yona, and I'm happy about that. Really, really. It's a good thing we no longer need to fight for our lives, but I suppose I'd be feeling restless. I know I have no reason to feel this way, but... Well, I don't know. Ow. I'm sorry. I don't wish to burden you with the worries. It's not like they are real worries. Anyway, it's more like an absence of worry. Uh, I must sound so spoiled. No, no. You don't understand how we feel completely. My own emotions echo yours. Tell me, Ellery. Are you alright living in Asaf? Huh? Every blinks, I don't think she expected this question, because she looks quite taken back. Why do you ask? I was just wondering. You want to return to Japan? You are adamant on it. You said you did not belong in Asaf. And you seem to regard returning to your old life as your duty. You told me you enjoyed your time spent as early, but you never truly regarded yourself as her. Unfulfilling. For you found your life. You want to return to being Aina from Nagoya? You only stayed in Asaf because I twisted your arm. If it weren't for me, you might never have decided to stay here. If it weren't for you, I never would have been given the opportunity to go back to Japan to begin with. I never would have been able to defeat you on my own. Practically speaking, that is probably true. But let's set logic aside for now. What if you had been able to defeat you on your own and Gardenia gave you the opportunity to return to Japan? Would you have taken it? Most likely, yeah. But that is because I liked my old life. I thought it was dual. To be honest, I was kind of relieved when you asked me to say, deep down, I knew it was what I really wanted. I did that 
For a while, it's true, I was afraid staying in Asaf would be akin to running away from reality or giving up. But Asaf is my new reality now, and I don't miss the person I was. I don't want to be Aina anymore. Wow. I'm fine with being Ellery. You don't regret your decision? Not one bit. I'm glad I met you. And I'm glad we're still here, together. Still, this is quite a strange question. It isn't like you did well so much on the past. Is something wrong? Um, fine. I was just wondering. I have felt unsatisfied myself as of late. I do not want to feel the same way. If being in Japan would make you happier, then... It wouldn't. Ellie takes a step forth. She finds my hands with her own and gently entwines our fingers. Her face is so close I can feel her breath on my cheeks. It's warm and it gives my skin prickle. When I first met Ellery, she never would have been courageous enough to stand so close to me. She was a stern other woman, a city knight no less, but she was shy too. She used to balk at physical contact and she blushed heavily whenever we were intimate. She's grown more comfortable with me over the last six months, however. And she's grown more com. However, what? Okay, however, nothing. And she's grown more comfortable with her feelings, too. My, 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 you've become quite bold. You must have rubbed off on me. It's rare that you ever seem to second guess yourself, much less regret your actions. I want to be strong like you, and I'm doing my best to put my anxiety behind me. I was able to change because I met you. You gave me strength. And that is why I'm honored to remain by your side, both as your knight and your girlfriend. Things might have come down in Asaf, but I don't regret that I'm here. Not for a second. You don't need to worry about me. I'm very happy that I'm with you. Oh, Valerie! Viola. And they kissed. If there would be a mention of saliva, I'll be so pissed. <laughs> Ellery dips her head. The cold breeze stir her long tresses and catch a whiff of her shampoo. My body's drawn to Ellery's as for by some sort of magnetism. My eyelashes flutter shut and soon my lips find hers. Why? Ellery bumbles my name against my mouth. I really do love you. Ah. I love you too! They did it! The bastards did it! Alright ladies and gentlemen, after a little kiss, time to end the episode. We'll continue tomorrow, and by that I will probably record the next episode during day, alongside more Katawa Shoujo. So hope to see you tomorrow. Have a wonderful day. Whoops. Bye bye.